gentlemen. If I can have the room of play, gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second annual Leonidas Foundation Kick-Off Cocktail Reception. At this moment, I would like to welcome in the pipes and drums of the Blue and Gold.
name is Alex Cusnello, and I'm a proud Vice President of the Leonidas Foundation. I would like to welcome all of you tonight to our second annual kickoff cocktail reception. Uh, thank you all for coming, for your support, for your future support. Uh, if it wasn't for all of you, uh, none of this amazing movement that has started would be possible. Um, you know, each one of you being a part of this movement keeps our beloved Leo alive every day. And for that, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. At this moment in time, I, I really would ask your help uh, to recognize probably the strongest, uh, most generous people I have ever met in my life. Please help me in giving a rousing applause for Teddy, Francis, and Alexander. We love you. Thank you all. At this time, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Without him, none of this would be possible. He's absolutely the backbone of the Leonidas Foundation. Please join me in welcoming co-founder, president of the Leonidas Foundation, my friend, my brother, Matt Perricum. Thank you, Alex. You won't catch him saying that any, any day but today, probably. So. Well, again, I'd, I'd like to welcome all of you here this evening and, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here with us. My name is Matt Perricone, and like Alex, I am proud to be the president of the Leonidas Foundation. Before I provide you with a brief overview of our organization, I would like to take, to take a moment to recognize some incredible people without whom none of this would be possible. I ask you to please hold the, all, all your applause to the end. First. I would like to thank our gracious hosts, The Waterside, Dina, Fran, Gus, and the entire staff. Hold your applause, please, sorry. <laughs> I got a lot of people to thank. I would like to provide special recognition to the board of the Leonidas Foundation. Vice President, Alex Cuccinello, Treasurer, Susan Paracone, our Secretary, Matt Conlon, James Ebert, our Technology Director, our Outreach Director, Spencer Fox, and our Charitable Initiatives Director, Catherine Griffinetti. I'd also like to thank in a special way as we celebrate National Volunteer Week this week, all of our amazing volunteers that helped put this event together. I won't be able to name them all because there are so many, but I'd like to recognize uh, our committee heads. Felissa Bernstein headed up our silent auction. Jill Wilson put together the wonderful program that you all received this evening. And our logistics committee was headed by Denise Jarrett, and she did a great job, and, and they all did, and all of our volunteers. Of course, again, I'd like to thank the Baez and Jesus family, immediate and extended families, there are a lot of them, um, for their constant love, support, and assistance. Again, without them, none of this would be possible. Special thanks to Mr. Griffinetti, John, our, our sponsors, uh, United Parcel Service, who's been a great partner to the Leonidas Foundation, and all of our business, government, religious, and education leaders from around New Jersey who join us today. Now you can clap. So why we're here tonight. On June 20th, 2016, my best friend Leo Baez lost his life with his best friend Sam in a tragic car accident. After Leo's passing, to honor his legacy and his kind and generous spirit, the Leonidas Foundation was born. From its inception, the Foundation has utilized persistent community outreach and charitable endeavors to enrich the mind, body, and spirit of others. Since I stood before you in this exact place last year, our first annual kickoff event, the Leonidas Foundation has grown exponentially in its philanthropic investment in the community. Our proudest accomplishment stands before you here today, and that is the LEO program at Don Bosco Prep. This 
program bears the name of Leo and focuses on the growth of the minds of young Ironmen. The L standing for leadership, the E for entrepreneurship, and the O for opportunity. This year, the inaugural class of 25 juniors is experiencing an unprecedented and unparalleled business education program featuring mentorship from top corporate executives and entrepreneurs attending the Leo Summer Business Conference in Washington, D.C., and creating and developing their own products and services that will eventually be pitched to a board of investors in a Shark Tank-style uh, gathering. The Foundation was happy this year to host our second annual Leo Unitas game at Don Bosco Prep, where they faced St. Francis Academy, Maryland. Our volunteers sold over 750 Leo Unitas shirts, many of which I see when I go around Bergen County. Uh, I'm happy to see them all, but they, we sold over 750 of those, and every uh, a student, parent, supporter was at the game cheering on the Ironmen while they played on the same field that Leo poured his heart and soul into for, for so many years. So that is a very special thing that we were able to do last year and we're hoping to continue to do. Our most meaningful work, though, is that which enriches the spirit of others. It brings joy, light, and fulfillment to those in need. From aiding the efforts of the Marma Margarita Foundation, building homes in Nicaragua, to stocking local food pantries, to providing toys to underprivileged and needy children during the holiday season. We were also proud to send a group of 25 orphans from St. Peter's Orphanage in Denville to Six Flags for the day, one of Leo's favorite places to go. We have been blessed to touch so many lives in honor of Leo. As the foundation grows, we plan to increase our community outreach continue our char charitable endeavors, and foster the expansion of the LEO program. We will still remain steadfast in our commitment to bring LEO's mantra of enriching the mind, body, and spirit to the whole world. The manifestation of LEO's legacy is walking among us tonight. We are proud to be in the company of our LEO program students who embody the hope we have for the future. Next year's LEO program class has a record 65 applicants, and 88 freshmen have already indicated their interest in the class when they are rising juniors. The future is bright, and we are very excited. I believe it is fitting to be here, surrounded by those who loved LEO on a day where I lost someone very close to me six years ago, my uncle, Jerry Paracone. In the words of former First Lady Barbara Bush, who we lost this week, I will say, at the end of your life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, not winning one more verdict, or not closing one more deal. You will regret the time not spent with a husband, a child, or a parent. The time we spent with Leo on Earth, and the time we have spent honoring his legacy, continues to inspire us to do God's work, improve humanity, and cherish those we love. At this time, I would like to welcome our LEO program students to the stage, and if I could get uh, any Don Bosco faculty, Mr. Esposito, um, for a presentation. If I could keep your attention, please. This contribution that we are handing over to the boys of the LEO program and their teacher will provide ample financial support to sustain the LEO program at Don Bosco Prep for years to come. Without your support and guidance, this vision would not have become a successful reality for these young men at Don Bosco Prep.
guys are trying to take that away. If you haven't had a chance to talk to any of these fine young men up here, I assure you that you would not waste your time in doing so. They're all fabulous young men. They have put their hearts and souls into the program for the last four months, and they will for, to continue to do so uh, for the next eight months. So please take the time to talk to them. Uh, they have really cool business cards that they can give you, and you can give them yours. Um, but again, thank you guys for being here, and we're proud to support the Leo program at Dunbar. If I could keep your attention, to conclude my remarks this e evening, I would not be remiss, I would be remiss if I did not thank each and every one of you for being here with us to honor Leo's memory and legacy. Your continued support is the lifeblood that keeps the Leonidas Foundation going. It is now time to present the second recipients of the Leonidas Foundation's Leader of the Year Award. We are honored to present the award to a family whose individual and collective contributions touched Leo's lives as a student, as an athlete, and as a man. To present the 2018 Leader of the Year Award to the Murray family, please welcome Leo's own family, Teddy, Francis, and Alexandra. Thank you again for attending. Uh, as you can see, my lovely bride over here keeps saying, keep it short, Tim. <laughs> so, without further ado, I'm going to put my own man glasses on. Now I'm going to, I got a little bit of a speech. Uh, I want to thank you all again for attending this evening uh, to honor our son in the, in the second annual kickoff. And, and, and I got to tell you, wasn't that awesome? Yeah. Leah, didn't Matthew and Alex something else? <laughs> Somebody once told me you can't affect the past, although we want to, and you can't affect the future. But you can only take care of something today. You know, these guys every day change the future. And that's, that's what we want, in a positive sense. So, uh, without further ado, um, uh, I want to... It takes great, I take great pride and pleasure in, in offering this award. It's the Leonidas, or Leo, a leadership award. And last year we gave it to one person uh, because we believe in you know the mind, the body, and the spirit, and that's what Leo taught us. He taught me and my wife and daughter and our family and friends. You know, it's about that what's up in here and what's here and what's inside the lion heart. But this year we wanted to do it a little differently because you know um, the family that I want to introduce you to they represent, exemplify, and really. Um, our mind, body, and spirit. I'm going to tell you a little about each one of them, if I may. When she starts kicking me under the table, she has one feet. So, I'm going to start with the mind. The mind. This brings me to the most important person in the, in the uh, Murray family, Mrs. Murray. <laughs> She's the, she's, the, she's the mom, the teacher. Mrs. Murray um, exemplifies everything around the mind. I mean, Leo used to be, Leo was a PC student, and he would tell us that. He got a PC student. Uh, and he marched to the beat of his own drum. And like many of us, we do the same. And um, he constantly looked uh, and thought outside that box. Well, for 14 years, Mrs. Murray, as a teacher at Don Bosco, took those BC type students, those really special focused young men for the piss and fire, and she could take them into a class and she got them to love the scholarly world. I mean, she got them to focus on what they do best, how they think, how they operate. And I remember Leo coming out in there and he'd, he just, he was in awe about um, his new style of taking the hill, and it was because she worked with his mind on focusing him on what he really enjoyed, and he, he couldn't do enough of it. So just imagine how many students Mrs. Murray has taken over 14 years 
And every one of those students has gone off to the colleges and started businesses and working and starting hopefully families. And the impact that Mrs. Murray had on the minds of these young men that she turned into, these young boys that she turned into men. So um, she brought the very best out of Leo, and she brings the very best out of every one of these young men. So I wouldn't write a little applause for this. Bosco girls are going to keep count. Number one, that's the first. The second is Mr. Murray. So uh, again, I, I go back to Leo and Sam, actually. The, the, both of those boys would say, Mr. Murray's the American dream. Why? Mr. Murray came over here 20 years ago in 88 from the Emerald Island, Island of Ireland. And uh, he worked hard. He worked smart. He supported the, the Don Bosco. Uh, working at Don Bosco and as a coach for the kickers. He raised a beautiful family, but he has the American work ethic. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Let me tell you about Mr. Murray, what he would do with Leo. Leo kicked with a whole bunch of people. He kicked with pros, he kicked with you know uh, other coaches, and they were all great. But he'd line up all his balls and then kick them. Ah, not with Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray would put one ball down, He'd say, this is a great quote. You got one shot, laddie. <laughs> now, I don't do it as well as Leo. He had a bit of an Irish pro. But he'd say, you got one shot, laddie. Make it count. Now, every once in a while, Leo would miss. Speak louder. Every once in a while, Leo would miss. And Mr. Murray wouldn't tell him to run down and get the ball. He'd walk all the way down, get the ball, think about how he failed, and how he was going to come back and make that kick. I mean, that is grit on here. So, um, Mr. Murray's style and his work ethic and what he's done in this great nation requires an applause. Family. Now, one more thing about Mr. Murray that Leo used to say. He'd come back and say to us, good luck is hard work. I'm like, where do you get that expression? Mr. Murray. What, what do we count now? Number two, right boys? We're up to two. Number three, spirit. This brings me the, the uh, Murray boys. Now, don't get bored yet. This is getting good. The young guy back there with the beard is Aiden Murray. Now, Aiden Murray was also a kicker at Don Bosco. Phenomenal kicker. And when Leo went to Don Bosco, he was his ambassador. So he took him around, showed him the school. Now, I want to show you the difference. Now, Leo was a decent kicker. Um, and Aiden, instead of him being in competition as a senior, Aiden took the kickers under his wing. Te teach them, you know, it was like little brothers. And Leo would come back and say, Dad, you won't believe this Aiden guy. He's unbelievable. The brotherhood, he kept saying brotherhood, brotherhood, brotherhood. That fellowship is what exemplifies Aiden. Now, that's one thing. One thing that really made Leo proud is that Aiden, when he got out of high school, he, got, he wanted to keep kicking. So what he did is he became a walk-on kicker at Rutgers. And he played for four years Division I football as a walk-on. That's good on him. Three and a half. Three and a half. Now we're at, coming up to four. And you can tell. Now, we got enough video? Good. All right. Patrick. Patrick is the oldest of the two. Murray boys. Patrick has played in the pros for five seasons. And he's still, now that is a buccaneer. Buccaneer. Now, now look at look at this young man full of piss and fire. Leo used to call him Lionheart. Lion. But but it wasn't him playing in the pros that was so admirable, if I may say that. Hey, uh, Patrick. Leo used to say, Dad, you gotta you gotta hear this great story. When Don Bosco left the state to go play a school in 
California called DeSalle, where they made a movie about this team. A bunch of young, smaller ball players entered that field. Now, that team had never been beaten at home for dozens of years, decades. Patrick kicks the ball, misses it. The next ball at the end of the game he kicks, he wins the game. That's gridiron, that's inspiration, that's focus, that's the spirit that God gives us, and that's Amy and Patrick, but because of their parents. So, four, Fran's yelling at me, but four was Leo's lucky number. Four are the family members, teacher who believes in students, coach that believes in hard work, student, athlete, job who believes in fellowship, and a, an alumni in the pros that believes in giving back and being humble. I can't say anymore. That's a leader. So if you can have the Murrays please come up, proud to present them with our second annual Leo Leader of the Year Award.
while it was speech given by your mom, especially when she was an English major in college, and I was spoken. But I'm going to do my absolute best here. I can't speak to Leo in the classroom, but what I can do is speak to Leo on a football field, which I believe is a place that he held very dearly, he worked very hard on, and loved very much. When I would come back in the summer, whether it was college or after my rookie year, I would kick with Leo. And I never expected to be intimidating to anybody, but there were some times when the players would get off the field and I would come kick and they would just watch. Leo wouldn't. Leo would stand right next to me and hit every single ball that I would hit. Same distance, same hash mark. And you gotta understand something about kickers. We're a little off. We're a little quirky. But we get each other. We're able to work together as a unit, work together as teammates, and make each other better. That's the quality that I remember most about Leo, and it's one of the qualities that I carry onto the field with me every single Sunday that I go to play. That teamwork, that drive to get better every single day, that willingness to never give up no matter what the task, that's what Leo had. That's what Leo left with me. That's, where I, that's why I wear his name on my wrist every Sunday. It's because he meant that much to me. The bond that we formed on the field, competing in the summer, will stick with me forever. Now to you guys. You guys have a responsibility to carry on the legacy that Leo left through the Leo program. I've gotten a chance to meet a lot of you tonight. I've gotten to hear some of your stories. Understand you guys are extremely blessed to be able to be in this position. Know that the person who this is named for, and whose legacy you carry on, was a truly special person. I know you'll take that with you and become successful in whatever you decide to do. Thank you very much. As, as my family, but from, from a coach's point of view, I didn't make it easy on Leo, trust me. He needed work, but nobody worked harder. We kicked and kicked and kicked. He would come up on a Saturday or a Sunday or Monday through Friday whenever we were having practice. Kickers were always, as Pat said, were a little quirky, were always fighting for space on the field. We used to go between the linemen and the receivers. We had a, approximately a 10 yard length or width and across the field. And I demanded of him always straight down the middle. I gave him no breaks. His buddy, Matt, was there. He long snapped to him. Leo punted, I caught. It was just brilliant. You know, I, I, it's just, he worked so hard. And I, 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 anyway, a small token to the Bias family. This is a ball, one of the balls, which was used in a game Leo played in, and also was then used as a practice ball. It's pretty beat up, so quarterback's not gonna necessarily want to throw it. Doesn't look pretty. But anyway, I, in, in closing, I'd just like to present it to Teddy and to Francis and Alexandra and uh, just say thank you for Leo. Thank you for, you know, and that's it. gentlemen, that's all we have for you guys. So, I'd actually like to introduce someone. Uh, he works for the Wendy Williams Show, Marco Blurries. Hello, everybody. How's everybody feeling? I must say, the benevolence is incredible in this room tonight, so please give yourselves a big round of applause for being in attendance here tonight. And I just want to say, this is the second annual of this evening, the anniversary. Tonight we're going to celebrate Leo's life. Is that okay with each and every one of you? 
Let me ask that one more time. I said we're going to celebrate Leo's life tonight. Is that okay with all of you? My name is Malcolm Flores, and along with DJ Izzy, we are elated to be here with all of you tonight. Izzy, let's start things off the right way. Ladies and gentlemen, feel free. The celebration has begun.